much, Yin. Everyone is so very excited for Ultimate Singles here at Top 8. I am AG, and I am joined by my lovely friend, one of the best to ever do it, Kimona. And we have a pretty wonderful lineup here. <laughs> the loser's bracket may even be, don't tell the people in winners, more exciting. I want to see Perhaps. all the, I want to see all the players <laughs> go crazy with it. Comet, one of my favorite players uh, I got to watch this weekend, absolutely beat me up over in the friendlies. Just oh yeah, like, me too. Just, yeah, it was bad. No, he was literally just taking turns back and right, forth, right. just bouncing us. It's yeah. crazy. I play with some of the best foxes ever do it. I taught him a thing or two, and I was still learning a thing or two from Comet as well. Yeah. Going up against Wolfie, who we saw play a bit of a back and forth against Dro earlier in the top 48 segment. Uh, wonderful Sonic. Pretty like interesting mix-ups that I still haven't seen, despite watching so many hours of Sonic, still finding new stuff and new implementation. It's gonna be an interesting matchup too. Two very fast characters, but in two very different ways, right? Two very different ways, yeah. I mean, Wolfie honestly is like one of those Sonics that like does not have like the infinite patience. Like, you know, you get used to watching the top level Sonic, you know, you think of Sonics, you think of Ken, you think of Rats, you think of all those guys, right? And you think of the guys that just have the patience to just sit back and do whatever for, you know, seven straight minutes in seven straight matches right. and every one of those being a best of five, right? But Wolfie's one of those players that, like, will actually get aggro with Sonic every yeah. now and then. Like, yeah, the yeah. pools match that I commentated with Wolfie, uh, like, it kind of got, like, a little irked with mm -hmm. the match and then just went in and just, like, three stock, two and a half minutes, something like that. Like, Sonic can be played that way. It's usually right. not quite as effective, but, uh, you know, Wolfie prone to do that sometimes. Yeah, yeah, we'll probably will be seeing some of that, too. Although, I don't know, Comet pretty aggressive as well with the Fox. A lot of ledge pressure, a lot of just sort of running forward. Fantastic combos, too. So we'll see who really has a chance to shine here. I know it's going to be a bit of a back and forth, but there's still so many other matches as well I want to talk about while they get set up, too. The winner side looks phenomenal. Anthony isn't cool on the cloud, going pretty pretty much undefeated for the most part, looking fantastic. And Danny with the wolf, mm -hmm. sort of underseated by some opinions going into the tournament, but immediately wrestled back the first seed. And it now looks... Just took it. Yeah, actually, Just took it. No one was in the way. Danny looked phenomenal. And now maybe poised to take it. Wonderful spot to do so in winners' semis. And shouts to the fans in the shout back. Out to, shout outs to the crowd. They're, lifting uh, it up. They're not numerous, but they're dedicated. <laughs> you know? That's all I can say. They're, they're lifting. I mean, look, honestly, dude. We got Flambo and Big M, two of the best hat wearers to ever do it. That's true. That's hey. true. I Look, and let's be honest. <laughs> That melee top eight is a yeah. hard act to follow. It's true. Like, it's true. Especially the hype that people had for Ossify, who right. just blew me away. Like as somebody who's like more of like a, I watch melee when a big tournament is on, right? I'm not like tapped into the scene constantly, but you know, I'll, I'll keep up with it. I know who the big names are generally, and I was like, oh, I've heard of Ossify. I hear he's pretty good. And then he was doing stuff with Marth that I was just like. Whoa! Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. I was actually like I made a tweet. I was just like Ossify is actually super right, sick. Right. Right. I was just sitting in my room watching the sets. It was great, but for all of you sitting at home, we are kicking Three, off two, Ultimate Top one, 8 between go. Wolfie and Comet in just a moment. I just had to finish my yes. sentence. But one thing I love about the series, which is just something that Watch the flow is of my exemplified this weekend, is it is such a display of the Midwest talent. We get to see so many players Keep that we don't normally get to see. The floor. Just this really put on a show. Go up against some people they don't normally get to go up against. Like I was looking for some historic set records between some of the players that we have lined up today. There's not a lot of data, and I'm excited to put some ink on those pages now today to and see original. how all of those dynamics clash with each other. Mm -hmm. I love the crowd. Yeah, I <laughs> the people who are here are dedicated. <laughs> then you yeah. see they're gonna run right on over like Production, a give them a break. set of lemmings. You know, we gotta yeah. give them a workout. These guys have been inside grinding all day, and now they're gonna. Show us what they're all about. Yeah, I'm loving it. They're having a good time. They have yeah. a lot of room for activities. This is also one of the things, like, I'm looking over into the yeah, side room. There are, like, a lot of people that are just, like, grinding the game. Right. I think, like, a, a lot of people saw that, like, Me Too King tweet back from, like, what was it, like, Ultimate Summit 3? Yeah. And it was, like, yeah. nobody's grinding. Everybody's just watching the games and hanging out. This is so sad. And then everybody in Ultimate was just, like, oh, is that what we're supposed to do? Right, right. They, and that's, like, what they're doing now. <laughs> they internalized it and have never let it down. So, yeah. Uh, they are still over there grinding as well, but we do have some lovely fans ready for this match. And mm -hmm. they are just a about ready. I think the hands are warm. And like I said, they've both been over in the side room playing some friendlies as well. So I know that they're feeling pretty good going into the top eight here. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, Common especially. You know, again, yes. we got a front front row first-hand experience as to just how ready he is. I uh, just saw the wolf come out one time, too, and I was like, hold on. Uh, the, the wolf put in <laughs> some work. I'll be honest. Nice combo game. But, you know, Wolves, on the other hand, Wolfie does not play Wolf. Then there is a Wolf player in this top eight. It is not Wolfie. No. Wolfie bringing out the Sonic, like we mentioned, going up against Fox. We are now kicking off Full Bloom Smash Ultimate Top 8. And the crowd is already ready to get into it, AG. Yep. Good times right out the gate. Just a couple of lasers, and they're already screaming. And that is definitely going to be a big change in the dynamic for the matchup. If Sonic ends up trying to be a little too conservative, Comet is you know, not above throwing a couple of lasers out to kind of force the issue. But right now, they're just kind of going back and forth, trading a couple of stray hits, and now some good vertical pressure. I mean, you know, stray hits and just like one here and one there is kind of Sonic's game plan until he gets something that he can kind of confirm. So you're going to see a lot of that spin charge used for that down B. It's going to have those multiple hits. It's going to give you that time to confirm. Oh, hey, I hit this guy. I'm going to get this combo. But that side B with the spin dash, of course, has those invincibility frames. You don't need to mash the button. You can just get right into that movement. Wolfie trying to take Ooh. advantage of that. But Comet right now in the advantage in this game, 103%, which means that you are already in confirm ranges. You see Comet already throwing out those nares, looking for that first KO and hunting. Right. Where you can see so many of those approaching nares trying to get one of the Sonic approaches, the up airs and the back airs are all fighting the mark too. Comet is playing wonderfully so far right now, but Wolfie going to try and respond, looking for a big swing, but not finding the target exactly, and they're back to it. This is a good opening for Wolfie, though, to kind of wrestle some stage back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this generally tends to be, like, a lot of people think that this is one of the tougher matchups for Sonic. You know, still pretty even, all right. things considered. But, you know, it's so one of the tougher ones for Sonic, and Light is, of course, one of the big representatives of this character that shows that off often, boasting a pretty good set record against Sonics and the likes, and Comet right now is showing off some really good stuff, but this is exactly what we're talking about. Yep. When Sonic does get that one hit, you just might be gone, but nice mix-up on the recovery from Comet, way off stage with that forward air hunting for some extra damage. Could have been a bad spot, but both players' feet back on terra firma. Right, it could be a big opportunity for Wolfie, just a slight misstep on the timing of that back air. That one, though, will set up for another situation. The forward air, though, not hitting for Sonic, gonna be the Fox board here to set up another edge guard for Comet and those delayed dash attacks. Such a great tool. So many different things are gonna get caught by that, but that spin dash breaks it up again. And now Wolfie firmly planted in the center stage, looking for a big swing in the forward tilt catches that whipped up smash. Honestly, forward tilt may have like just ducked right in underneath that up smash once the leg had gone up, right? So like perfectly timed there from Wolfie. Let's get that first stock. But with these percents, we are out of confirm range for Comet, so we are kind of on that read your movement, get a stray hit kind of percent. But that is exactly what Comet's playstyle is built around. Like, if Comet does anything really well, it is reading your movement, being able to call it out. That's how we saw that first stock get taken. I would bet that's how we're going to see the second one get taken as well. Yep, we can see some good damage with the throw and the pummels as well. Comet also known to get some grabs in, which generally Fox doesn't get a lot off of, but adding on to that percent now at 148, the kill confirms kind of open up. It's a big, it's a pretty long list at this point. These back here too, if that one shield poke, you could have done it. That might have been really good uh, positioning. It's kind of hard to tell when people are shifting the shield, but if Wolfie put that shield forward a little bit, right? May have saved from that shield poke, but your ears are getting clipped by that up air melee puff style Comet. Getting that second stock done already. Wolfie still trying to hunt for some of those big openings. We've really only seen like a couple of real combos like that, right? For the most part, it's been straight hits, but ha! <laughs> I was just about to think to myself, it would be a shame if Fox got edge guarded. Yeah. And that was an even faster one than I expected, but here's some of those up airs that we have come to know and love from the Fox. Really good tool right there. Ravage have a lot of damage as well. Trying to look for an edge guard here. Delayed dash attack into the back here. Should not do it but at least the fans <laughs> liked it. I mean, you've played enough against enough Fox at this point that you know when it doesn't kill, yeah, yeah. but that one will indeed. Excellent combo game from Comet, that entire game number one. That was kind of the big difference maker, right, I feel right. like, was just damage built up from him pretty quickly and then was able to play patiently because he's playing with the lead and look how it turned out. Exactly, but that being said, Wolfie did find some very key moments and tried to just get as much as possible from those key moments. The edge guards were great. The forward smash was such an explosive way to do it because you don't know if the spring will work. You don't know if uh, forward tilt will hit if the fox decides to take an angle that you didn't expect. So the forward smash was a bit of a gamble, but it worked out wonderfully and kept it close pretty much all the way down to that last stop. Mm -hmm. Again, just, you know, really impressive patience from Comet because you know that you don't really 
get to control when interactions happen against Sonic. I think that's one of the reasons why he is one of the most powerful characters in this entire game is that he gets to determine that because he's the faster character and he can pretty much always put himself wherever he wants to on the screen. I'm a little curious to see Small Battlefield for game two where things are a little bit up close. But again, like I was mentioning earlier, Wolf is one of the more aggressive Sonics, especially when he starts to lose his patience. And so we might see some of that come into play. Well, so far right now, it is kind of the Comet Show keeping that pressure up. All the offensive options kind of leading into one another and you know, Wolfie's just kind of on the back foot right now, especially after that back foot. Setting up for the edge guard, but gonna make it back just fine. And no spike. Whoa. I talked about those big gambles working out. Unfortunately, that one was not uh, one to add to the win column, to say the Wolfie least. Wolfie was watching some Ossify earlier yeah. and was like, I need some of that. <laughs> I'm taking notes. I bet, I bet I could hit that down air, though, actually. Right. Gonna try and slow down a little bit. Nice little opening here. Gets the air dodge, but no big punish afterwards. Okay. See, just trying to catch Comet landing in with an aerial, but Comet's like very, very measured and has just a really good sense of when you're going to try to get aggressive as his opponent and then just kind of dance outside of that range. Great reaction time. Uh, you know, again, just one of those players with like really, really solid fundies shows that off really nicely. And especially because, again, you think that Sonic should be controlling the pace of the game, but Comet's been pound for pound getting more hits and they have been more meaningful hits thus far. Ooh, you, okay, I love that idea. The forward smash is not going to do it, but good tracing with the up air, keeping that pressure up too. We'll be on the ledge, but what a way to fight off. That's huge. Could get the back air right there, but no, really good route and fade out from Comet to avoid that as well. Ooh, what? Ooh, oh my god, comboing off of the spring? Like he just missed the tech and it's gone? We call that back where we're from. Call that the Sour Patch Kids combo. Sour, sweet, and gone. <laughs> <laughs> love that. But that is another opportune moment for Wolfie. Really good pickup right there. Big possibility here to add on some percent without losing this second stock, especially if Comet gets a little impatient like we're seeing right now. Wolfie will not mind taking a couple of straight hits from those big swings from Comet. We'll see. I mean, now that the stocks are evened up, again, you have uh, much more leeway to be able to control that pace of the game. Surprised that Comet isn't really like just fishing for those combo starters, right? The ones that are going to go into those confirms. But I mean, again, because he's been so adept at finding those stray hits, he hasn't really needed to. And especially if he gets something like a tech chase or something, that could be really helpful. Yeah, I think we're kind of seeing an adaptation, though. Wolfie is kind of responding with some good spin dashes from the corner. Those back airs are not going to hit as often, but Wolfie sneaks another big back air. I love the idea to kind of pressure with your presence right there, not really going for any big moves, but still keeping Comet guessing. And the up air. Ooh. Oof. Again, springs and back airs just go together like tomatoes and cheese. Right. As far as I'm Ooh. seeing, we got a combos, we got chases, and now with Comet, I love that recovery, using that forward air to extend the distance of the recovery, change up the timing. Wolfie had already committed to that neutral beast, so that was a dead Sonic no matter what happened. All right, this could be tough now. Wolfie's gonna have to make something happen, but Fox is so good at adding that early percent, already 60 or more. We see the dash attack is a threat, so the jump comes out, but then that gets hit by the neutral air. So much more, the jab lock. Yeah. Into the forward smash, good stuff. Figuring that the up smash may like whiff on that getup if it was mistimed or just being able to basically say, I'll take my guaranteed damage, it's all I need. But Comet is going to take a trip to the blast. So nice little there, but it didn't set up for the full tech chase. Although again, the read on the movement, Comet tossing out that back air has a 2-0 lead to his name now. He has just been too clean. Yeah, it really is mostly just traced out. You know, Comet has been doing a good job of putting Wolfie on the ledge and then forcing certain options and then frankly guessing all of the other ones. And it's just been back airs that have been taking stocks. Just like even more and more damage that we see. Wolfie try to get some sort of get up option going, whether it be regular get up, whether it be jump, and they all pretty much lose to the Fox neutral air. And if the, you try to jump and use the spring, all of a sudden you have to try and land against all those Fox up airs. It is very tough, but Wolfie is still finding some new innovations. We're already seeing a pretty nice change of pace in this game three. Oh, I do wow. love that we got the Tekken music going on. Always respect a player who puts that on, at least if it was on purpose. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, I'll just thank the fates. But game number three, back to small battlefield. Wolfie definitely got off to a hotter start. The Comet, then firing back, that combo game has just been immutable. It has been really, really solid, and Wolfie hasn't really found a way to sort of position around those big starters. Right, right. 
they're relatively safe too. Comet's, you know, short hop neutral air. It does be a possible approach from Wolfie, and then if not, you're just right back down to set up for another one. The delayed dash tag into the back air won't do it for another 20 Ooh. or so percent. But the drop zone there. Ah, uh, but nice. Comet, okay, wasn't confident enough, but Wolfie just hung on to the ledge, didn't really know what Comet's next move was going to be, and hanging on too long did get you down smash. So Comet, once again, getting to play with the lead here, although back throw going to send you way off stage. This is where Sonic can do some big damage. Okay, should be able to get the hit here, but the ah. Firefox wins out. Yeah, you got to get, like, under Fox if you're going to throw out a hitbox that's not, like, super disjointed to connect uh, against that Firefox. The little accidental footstool there, but just... Bob Ross, right? You yeah. know, the happy little mix-ups? Right. <laughs> That's what we get, the happy little resets, right? We got a combo off of it anyways. And Wolfie's gotten a couple of those already, right? Definitely like a yes and player, you know? Yeah, <laughs> improvising, right? right? right. Ooh, speaking Who's Sonic of, is it anyway? Right. <laughs> what a custom combo right there from Comet. Pretty much all of Fox's aerials got involved. Big damage right now. The forward air is going to set up for some of that vertical oh! pressure. <laughs> so, so smart. We talked about the threat of the up airs, which generally will make Wolfie want to get to the ledge to try and feel safe. But it's just back air after back air here in this game. Kamu with a clean stock lead, but Wolfie still has some momentum here. We'll see if he's going to be able to bring it back. I think I'm starting to feel like I'm mistaken on this being Tekken music. I kind of thought that it sounded like one of the menu themes, but I guess suppose I'm wrong. I was going to let it slide. That, <laughs> somebody in chat did not. Right. I know there. I know there's somebody in the Mango chat. Shoutouts to Mango, by yes, the way, giving yes. us a, a place, a home to watch all these wonderful sets at full bloom, including this one where, true to his heart, there is a Fox player doing damage. Comet just needs one more stock to get the 3-0 over Wolfie and keep one of the lightning cool players in this game Ooh. in the bracket. But Wolfie, man, fighting back with some fire. It's gonna be tough. A lot of shield pressure, though, coming in from Comet, so Wolfie's gonna have to change up the play a little bit here. Looking for that jump, but again, wonderful jump in, fade out. Wonderful Ooh. mix up. It worked again and again, and even when it mattered most, Comet weaved around all of those hitboxes from Wolfie and found a very nice kill confirm to take that set. Just really solidly played stuff from Comet that whole way through. I'm hearing the Dr. Mario music and I'm getting Genesis flashbacks, but that aside, Comet playing super well, like you said, hitting that kill confirm right at the moment where it mattered most to close out the set. And even though we didn't see a lot of those kill confirms, right? You gotta praise the ability to get the reads to close out those stocks. And on top of that, just the combo game to build up the damage was right. so impressive. I right. mean, you were talking about the combos from a hat, right? You know, yeah. just the, <laughs> the Colin mockery of combo game. Exactly. And it would just be 70% at the start of a stock every single time. It was really impressive. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, you know, we talked about the vertical pressure. I can't stress it enough because it led to so many of those back airs just being extra effective. You catch Wolfie going to the ledge because you don't want to deal with those up airs. You catch Wolfie trying to fade away and get to that ledge, and maybe that leads to some of those back airs taking the stock a little bit early because some of them were a little surprising. I, you know, I give that move a hard time, as does every Fox enjoyer, but they were doing the job wonderfully in that set. So yeah, can't complain too much. Really good stuff from Comet, of course. You know, Wolfie putting on a good show, made it to top eight yeah, here yeah. at Full Bloom, but. I mean, yeah, just Comet doing a good job of, like, not committing to stuff. When you commit to stuff, that's when Sonic can do a lot of damage to you, but we just didn't see that happen a lot. So, yeah, Comet, I mean, one of the top seeds of the tournament, so no surprise to see him moving on, but we will see what happens. And speaking of top seeds of the tournament, probably the, the number one after, you know, a couple of people dropped out this weekend. Yeah. Doorstop yep. still yep. in the bracket, upset by, uh, I believe, Isaiah uh, earlier, who we will be seeing later in the top eight, but still in it. Yeah, it was a game five with Isaiah, the Pac-Man, who Doorstop does say, you know, is a, is a comfortable matchup, at least for Doorstop personally, maybe not for all the Zero Suit Enjoyers, but didn't go exactly Doorstop's way down to the wire, but still feeling good. I've seen some, nothing but, frankly, positivity from Doorstop, feeling good going into the rest of the bracket. And this matchup is actually one that is not a popular one, but it's gonna be you get on the Puff versus Doorstop mm -hmm. on the Zero Suit. And Doorstop, I would say it's pretty confident. There are certain pieces of technology that I have talked with Doorstop about in terms of that specific matchup that as far as anyone knows, only Base Mage has really discovered or implemented. It's also very specific and frankly doesn't help too much in the matchup, just a little bit. So it's not mm -hmm. gonna be uh, exactly the easiest battle for you kids. It's gonna be an uphill one to say the least, but if there was ever a time to do it, you know, you're on the big stage, you got all the fans watching. 
You got now your little intermission during Melee oh, Top 8 true, as well, true, right? Yeah. To kind of look up, oh, hey, is there some interesting tech that right, I need right. for this matchup, you know? I, I, I forecast that it will be for both of these players, like, a, a frustrating matchup oh, above surely, all else. Surely. Because Zero Suit's not bad at playing an air-to-air -air game, right? right? And, you know, even a, uh, an anti-air game as well, right? You think of that up smash is just, like, one of the best anti-air moves in the entire game, right? But, you know, if you're playing that air-to-air -air game, Against a character like Puff, it might be kind of hard to get solid connections and combos. Right. If you do get one, it'll kill very early, but she's going to be hard to lock down. And of course, the same can be said for Yukit playing against Doorstop and a Zero Suit Samus, because as Puff, you want to just hang out in the air where people can't really chase you and can't really threaten to, you know, play a chip back and forth game with you. But Zero Suit can kind of do that. She's got the maneuverability to sort of play some keep away. Now, granted, some of those keep away tools are a little bit harder to use when your opponent is as maneuverable in the air as Puff is, but I think that's why both of these players might just have to sort of change up from the, this is traditionally what my approach to every matchup is, right. and you're going to have to really have a unique spin on your character to approach this one. Yeah, I think it's going to be pretty interesting. I don't know if either of them are particularly prepared. I know there's only a certain <laughs> amount of preparedness one could have going into it, but they are still surely going to be surprised by how the games unfold. And I am excited to see how they improvise and work with that new information, but they look like they are pretty comfortable. They're getting ready to, well, they're, they're getting ready to get ready. Getting ready to say. get ready. Yeah, hopping into some hand warmers right, as right. usual, which, you know, I, I, I can't say I imagine that Puff needs a particular amount of hand warmers. Well, I mean, it, to <laughs> expand on the tech, a little bit without giving it all away, you know, to the players Give at home. Give it all away. Tell us. It's, it, what are we looking I out for, I may be for, misquoting, AG? too, but basically there is a series of inputs that Puff can implement that are basically like landing aerials into buffer turnaround where she essentially is like squashed down for a little bit longer than she normally would. Mm. So while she's sort of pancaked from the landing aerial and the buffer turnaround, she has a few more extra frames kind of stuck under the Zare, which is obviously